Hello. Hi there. I thought we weren't supposed to say hello anymore, Arthur. Well, let's just don't say open. welcome to another episode. Yeah, da, 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 da. Oh, whoops, I said <laughs> <clears throat> Well, we're back after a week's absence, and uh, maybe some of you noticed. We don't know. That was an old show because Arthur hasn't been feeling too well, and you may notice he still isn't feeling that well. But deaf in one ear still. <laughs> we decided to soldier ahead, and so to speak. Actually, that's interesting. I said that since uh, someone, a viewer, wrote that. In response to Arthur saying he would like us, like viewers, to uh, let us know ideas for shows, and a woman suggested that we talk about the military. And it was interesting, her email, because she didn't really quite say why she was interested in this. And I have to admit, one reason I thought was that maybe somebody that was close to her had joined the military. Yeah, you know, it, it sounded was, like someone that she would, you know, ordinarily not think of as going in the military. Yeah, or something, you know, and I, I actually kind of like the fact that she left it ambivalent, so we weren't really sure where she was coming from um, about it. So, Plus, and, if you've listened to this show, we're very much pacifists. <laughs> right, so she, and, and so it seemed like with what's going on in the Middle East, and uh, maybe you could also say in the Midwest, um, we, that's discussing what's happening uh, with military. It's about time the people of this country woke up and started realizing that uh, we need liberty too. Right. Badly. Right. So, you know, it seems in like. In case you haven't noticed, the pigs are taking over. Oink, oink. Okay, well, we'll get to that. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. so anyway, this seemed like a very interesting topic to us. But those of you out there who also have ideas, you, as you see, we like taking um, topics. So if you've got something interesting, please call us, 808-8014, or email us at info at questionofmeeting.com. Speaking of that, we canceled our next two gigs at uh, or evenings at Firestorm Cafe. Next one. We only had one. We only had one. Okay. The reason one, uh, the primary reason we did that is because six people came to our last event, you know. Maybe that's, you know, maybe we're just kidding ourselves here. We're trying to put it out. <clears throat> but if that's all the interest, on a Saturday night at 730, if you can't drag your ass down to one of our events and uh, support us by being there, <laughs> just sitting in a chair for a couple hours, then, you know, maybe we're wasting our time. So shame on those who didn't show up, <clears throat> who said they would. Mm. End of editorial. Just a little residual anger. Yes. And... Uh, Frustration that we've been doing this show for what six months? Well, oh, when we, eight months, nine ah, months. Are you kidding? No. Coming up no. in a year? It is a year. It's a year. It's a full year. Okay. Hey, Asheville, we moved here. Okay, to, okay. Um, so, you know, when we first talked <clears> about <throat> doing this show, which unfortunately was a, a, probably over a week ago, because as I said, we were going to do this last week and Arthur wasn't feeling well, you, you said something, the way you said about the military, the role of the military, I, I thought was so beautiful and, and probably would have su been surprising to our viewers. And can you remember what you said? Yeah. Could, could you say it now? Yeah. <laughs> on a pragmatic level, on the level of objective reality, the ceiling is up, the floor is down. We need the police. We need the police of some neighbor who just doesn't give a rat's rear around parks in front of your driveway. Mm -hmm. We need the police. Mm -hmm. We need the police when some trifling no account decides that breaking into your house to support their drug habit, or for whatever reason, is uh, okay. They made that okay in their mind. Mm -hmm. We need the police. By the same token, I mean, I think anybody with half a brain cell would recognize that. By the same token, the military is our, to me, our national police force. Right. That their job is to protect not our individual homes, but the borders of the country right. against aggression. Right. That's what their job is. It's not nation building like that mongoloid you put in the White House for eight years who claimed he wasn't a nation builder. And then turned out to attack the country of Iraq with no reason whatsoever other than probably furthering the military industrial complex, corporate lap dog of the never met a corporation he didn't like. Mm. The military has been woefully in this country misused for you know most of my lifetime, starting with Vietnam, or you could even argue Korea. 
<clears throat> certainly Vietnam. But you know what? So that said, right. okay, that, okay, I'll throw that out there. You take it. Okay, well, so take it a lot because I'm feeling really yeah. weird. I shouldn't be even doing this. So what I think you said. So I I think that's really true, and I think that's a great way to hold the military is that it's that that's the purpose of the military, and unfortunately, our military has not been doing that for the last hundred and some years, and uh, in in. That you know, and I, I believe George Washington, in his farewell address, made some reference to uh, warning the U.S. about uh, f imperial ambitions, and, and and certainly in the late 1800s, when you know the the Spanish American War, that was you know about Cuba and the Philippines. That was when the imperialist side of the American. Uh, pol political structure, we really it really started taking off, and so for since that period, the 1890s, absolutely, our military has been used for imperialist uh, um, interests. It has been used to further American business interests around the world. It has been used to uh, to uh, express our power into every reach, every corner of the globe, and to World make us and dominant. Yeah, you don't think you don't think that our fight with you don't think our fight with Japan was about uh, imperial uh, control of resources? Absolutely, you know we pretty it up with all sorts of um, good war. of all sorts of um, you know in World War One. If you read an objective history of World War One, which is difficult to get. Uh, World War One was all about imperial. The, the war is in, as Bob Dylan wrote in God in Disguise. You know the reason for fighting. I still don't get. Uh, you know, God on our side. We got on our side. That um, you know, it's I. I struggled for years to understand what World War One was a good about. Book. Uh, I, I think it was called The Politics of War by Walt, Walter Karp is the name of the um, author for sure. C or K. K A R P. And he really dissects World War One and the fact that it was it was about uh, the the battle between the British imperial system and the rising German, and that Germany was uh, um, a rival to British imperial power, and that's what it was all about. That Britain 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 did not want to give up control of the of the world. Basically, con the British ha had control of the world at that time, and they didn't. They didn't want to uh, relinquish control to Germans. They didn't want German to have cl colonies in Africa, and that's what World War One was about: is imperial powers battling for control of the world. And World War Two, same thing. And yet, and we get it all clouded up by how bad Hitler was, and how bad the Japanese were. But when you strip away all the morality, it comes down to raw imperial power, and that's what um, our military. We get back to that. Our military has been used in that for that purpose to, uh, and and so that's an, an incorrect use of the military, and. What I really wanted to say when we were talking about this, uh, doing this as a subject, was being a child of the 60s and 70s, I was opposed to the draft. I mean, you know, knee-jerk opposed to the draft. I thought it was a horrible thing. And I was opposed to the draft until 2001, when I started realizing what it meant to remove the military from the, the citizen participation. And what that ha what happens when the military becomes a volunteer also service known as mercenary is it becomes a mercenary army and that you are uh, paying people to fight your battles and you are uh, separating out the armed forces from the, the the population as a whole and 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 setting up a, a warrior class a a, a, a certain div division of the of the citizenry who fight your wars for you, and this came clear in just in the last few weeks when in Egypt, when people were saying, "Well, why do the people of Egypt trust the army when the army, you know, that's where um, 
Mubarak came out of the army. The army has controlled Egypt. It has been part of the whole system of dictatorship for uh, however long this has been going on, 50 years. And th this one line I read in an article said, because every member, every family in Egypt has a member in the armed forces. They, because they are required, I mean, I, I, and I don't really know the, the mechanics of that, but because the participation in the army was so spread out through the citizenry, they felt like there's no way that the army would turn its guns on the people because it would be their own family they would be shooting. And then you contrast that with Libya where Libya is using, and, and also Bahrain, same thing, but Libya in particular, where uh, Lib Libya is blatantly using mercenaries, mercenaries yeah. from other countries of Africa to <coughs> fight. Their, so that's why it's, Libya is becoming They're so much bloodier. They're also of the tribes. The, the, right. the tribes have their own army units under tribal leader, so there's no unified army. Right. And then you can look at why did Vietnam get stopped? Vietnam got stopped, and Arthur will tell you because, you know, he was older than I, he's older than I, so he was, you know, really more aware of what was going on. He, the Vietnam stopped when the college deferments stopped. So when the draft really started penetrating the educated section of affluent the, the class. affluent class of this country, the people of this country, when all of a sudden it was their children, they were being sent to die. The rich. The war was stopped. And that's the point of a citizen army is because then the people are, are intimately connected with the war decisions of the government. And they feel the cost. That's right. And right now, Iraq, Afghanistan, all our other military adventures out there that are kind of unspoken, you know, Pakistan drone attacks, that doesn't have any relevance to my life. I bet you could do a direct correlation between the uh, the economic class of modern soldiery right. in this country. That's right. You could just... That's right. And it's becoming almost like a hereditary thing. Uh, we did a TV yeah, show. Vietnam was like that for a long time. We did it, Rock and right. with one foot in their graves. Well, it was the poor. I mean, yeah. it, right, and that's what you're saying. I'm saying there's kind of another thing. But yeah, <clears throat> absolutely, right now, I could, I bet if you did a socioeconomic uh, study of who was, who's in our modern-day army, it's the poor. Because they're the ones that are attracted by the, the $40,000 signing bonus. Yeah, that winner's bone. That that's right. Academy Award that's right. You know, it's the way, it, you know, when you're desperate. desperate. Yep. Um, the only person I you get I killed, know you get a quarter million dollars. The only person I know from <clears throat> my childhood acquaintances that went in the army was the poorest person I knew, and that's it was his ticket out of poverty, and uh, and then I I did a TV show um, and we I've talked about that in the town where we were before, and they have this adventure race, and this and grueling uh, multi you know t you know skilled race. And a large percentage of the people that participate in that are military, and and I I could see that um, that that hereditary nature. Their parents are um, were in the military. Their children are, are going into the military. So you know we're setting this up for this. Uh, and so anyway, I think that having the type of military structure we have right now is is totally detrimental to our future as a as a democratic republic. So just think about it. Want to have a war? Hire the poor. That's right. So what? That's Name right. one. Hire Mexi Hire immigrants. Yeah, it's, sure. You get a, free, a fast free, track to citizenship. That's right. That's right. Imagine we are allowing non-citizens to fight in our wars right now. We're giving getting people with you know <laughs> they're felons. They have criminal records. Street gangs. You know, sure, whatever. Right. We'll take them. Right. They talked about that. Yeah, that um, street gangs from uh, right. That you go into the military for a few years, get really training and, and just, you know, how to kill really, how to kill really effectively. And then they go back onto the streets and man, you know, their, their, their gang. Their, record, their, their records expunged at the same time. Right. It's probably part of the large house. It's disgusting. You want to have a damn war. Everybody should be, everyone should go. Right. And I don't mean just men either. Right. Ladies. That's right. You That's know? right. Sure. Let's have shared sacrifice instead of go out and shop. 
That's right. Like El Creepo again. Right. But but it, it's more than just sacrifice. It's re- recognizing Country's that El Creepo. to really have a democracy, to really have a republic, it requires that all citizens are part of this aspect of our nation. I have I've become completely convinced of this. That without a citizen army, you you've lost a, an essential aspect of being a democratic republic. Um, and then you wouldn't be so cavalier about so, going off to whoa. That's hey, right. That's for sure. When the president, you know, is, you know, President Nimrod, you know, says it's time to go marching off to whoa. Maybe you think about it a little bit. Right. That's you right. Know, we got enough hydrogen bombs to blow up the world ten times over. What do you? What do you? You know, when is war justified? And of course, mentioning hydrogen bombs. That's why I'm a pacifist, because at a certain level, ladies and gentlemen, you got to realize that hitting back has become obsolete. Right. When everybody's dead, who gives a rat's rear end? Patrick Henry, kiss my backside. I mean, give me, you know, better dead than red. Give me liberty or give me death. Uh, no, no, I think I'll take slavery, since we're slaves anyway to the rich, which is blissfully ignored. We're slaves to that which is in our heads, mm-hmm. which is blissfully <clears throat> ignored. We think we're in touch with reality. Mm, okay, whatever gets you through life. Jesus is coming soon, might as well. I believe the Easter Bunny's gonna fix, he's <laughs> gonna bail us out. Uh huh, sure. Recent poll, 80% think the next decade is going to be worse, but the same 80% think their lives are personally going to get better. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm not sure. That was a poll taken some time ago. I'm yeah. not sure that you'd get the same results today. What do you think you'd get today? You well, know, I think people are are definitely more pessimistic about their, their personal futures. I, I really so. do. I, I really do. So. You should be. You know Why? Because you're living in a plutocracy, that's right. Effectively pretending to be a democracy. That's right. The rich are running the show. The rich own your freaking government. You are a moron if you vote Republican. <laughs> I mean, the demo- the demon craps. I call them the real ugly man party, mm-hmm. or the demon crap party. <laughs> and you know what? It's the lesser evil, but you know I pull the lever for demon craps since I was old enough to vote for Hubert Humphrey back in 1968. Well, I think it's time, and but. and that's what as we kind of introduce what our topics for today. I I mean, that's in both of our minds kind of the hopeful sign of what's happening in Madison, Wisconsin, and now spreading to Indiana and Ohio. That They're perhaps, not tea partiers. That perhaps this, the, the, this freedom movement that's I mean, just blossoming in the Middle East. And, you know, just to stop myself, okay, anyone out there who is, tends towards Republican, look at what the Republican response— Maybe the only thing worse than a Republican is a freaking independent— now, well, there's somebody okay, who really all right. Let, let me finish my point, elbow. Arthur. Okay, right. Any, so, Jesus. right. So, if you're an independent out there, think, look at the Republican response to what's happening in the Middle East, and think deeply about it. That if that's possible. If you're li- capable Rush, of it. Arthur. It's the truth. Rush Limbaugh is was criticizing us for not supporting Mubarak, for not support, not propping him up, and continuing in power. All the when at CPAC that that congressional political action committee that Seek that high. meets their annual meeting every year and all the the prospective uh, 2012 candidates were coming except of course Sarah Palin didn't high show Hitler. up because they don't pay she only goes where she's paid hundred thousand um, speaks but you betcha um, <laughs> the point is not one of them said one word about Egypt which was falling. Uh, that the whole events were unraveling in Egypt at the time the CPAC convert you know that Mubarak's uh, n- defiant speech was was one night and then the next day when he you know left all that was when this CPAC was happening and not one of those 2012 candidates had they didn't say anything in favor and they didn't say anything against foreign policy which what? means What's that? they were paralyzed with fear about saying the wrong thing. So, I mean, the conservative in this country are either afraid of, of 
to take a stand because they're waiting to see what way it falls out. See, coward. Or they are on the side of the dictators. See, fascist. You know, and so, and think about that. I mean, so, you, okay, you can you can criticize Obama for being weak and vacillating. I do. And we do. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, at least he's, like, vacillating, you know, and he's, like, and said some things in favor of the democracy. And, of course, the the pro George W. Bush people have tried to 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 claim this victory for him as they Reagan people tried to claim the victory of the fall of the Soviet Union for, you know, Reagan's They're policies. Good at that. Just like the, the Ruskies right. were, like the Soviets used to be. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, we thought of that many years ago. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, well, we had that figured out long before Thomas Edison. <laughs> Ski. You know, so, <clears throat> right, so whose side are they on? And... And the that's pigs. the question, They're right? Pigs They're pigs protecting the pigs because that's what our whole, you know, Middle East, our foreign policy has been about, as our military policy has been about, which is promoting U.S. business, mm. promoting U.S. power around the world, which means the money flows in our direction. Who cares about the people what of this mean country? Our direction. Well, you mean I the masters the, of the universe well, I meant are the, really national, the true rulers of right. your country. Right, that's what I meant. Uh-huh. Our nation's direction, which is into the pockets of of the pigs right. who own everything. <laughs> so um what's that delicious statistic we just heard? It's like the top four hundred <clears throat> people. Yeah. Four hundred people in this country are worth own as much mm-hmm. as one hundred million Americans. Right. I love democracy. It's just so fair. <clears throat> it's so even handed. No, any capitalism. I mean oh, oh yeah, that's right. I get it confused because <laughs> I was taught that democracy and capitalism are the same. <laughs> but it seems like it's not. <clears throat> seems like there are just some folks that just are just better at getting their pig trotters on everything. They just want to swallow everything whole. And the rest of them work for them for reduced wages and Sorry, your, your retirement benefits have been cut off. And let's see, what else can we stick to you? Just like the good old days that we want to go back to because we're Republicans. Yeah, and you know, and this want to go back to the Gilded Age. Makes me think of where children could work. Why are your children going to school when they should be at the factory breathing coal dust for two cents a day? I, I've, I have the saying. The days. I have the saying. Now it sounds like I'm. I'm sick. Oh no! Don't say that. <clears throat> God, please don't. My saying get is. Um, please, please. Destruction is easier than creation. I've seen this in my life. That it, it's so much easier to just tear something down than it is to build it up to to make something new. Mm-hmm. And and I, I when I look at <clears throat> the difference between Republicans and concert and, and Democrats or really liberals and conservatives. For me, this is one way to look at it, that Republicans are mostly about destruction and the liberals are mostly about creation. And this is why the liberals struggle so much, because to create is much harder. And so like, look, and what, what I've been hearing lately is, oh, the reason um, that you know, the Republicans won in 2010 was because the Democrats overreached. And so are the Republicans going to overreach you know, in terms of cutting taxes? And I'm like, overreach. I mean, what did the Democrats do in the last two years? Let's see. Not they, nearly enough. They passed a, a health care reform bill, which was should have been done 20, 30 years ago. Except for some party. Um, and they, what did they do? They did the Republican plan. They didn't do a liberal plan. They did the conservative plan. But they pilloried Hillary over. Yeah. They they did some, you know, financial regulation because, let's see, two, year, th- two three years ago, the financial services uh, brought the world economy to its knees. So they, they oh my God, they, they, they put some regulations on that. You know, what else did they do? You know, I mean, they didn't raise, I mean, it's like, how was this overreaching? And and what, so what I'm, I'm Express saying is- I'm concerned about climate change. <laughs> oh my God, what a waste so of So here are these, Amer- here are these, not American problems, here are these, these huge problems, national problems and global problems that the healthcare is out of control and is threatening to just destroy the nation because our, somehow it needs to be reined in. Um, the financial services industry is out of control and has destroyed the economy. It needs to be Under Bush, the fixed. Idiot. 
Um, All of us on our bus The climate, you know, there's 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 environmental problems. There's energy Red problems. Red all over the console. I mean, one of the problems with the Mideast, what's happening in the Mideast is that, you know, the cost of oil could just skyrocket and which would you talk about being in a recession now um oh that's right we're out of the recession okay going back to a recession some are. um that was a joke um i know some so, are some are doing very yeah. well for you know so there's you the know we need to country. develop new sources of energy i mean okay these are i mean i i think any rational sane person would identify these as problems that our nation is 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 suffering from so what is a, what does a liberal do a liberal says okay let's let's solve these by you know let's go after them and create solutions to these problems and but what do the republicans do the republicans they, they hold their breath until they turn blue the, they, they do, lie down they, on the door where they the block thing, every single agenda I'll, every single thing that obama has tried to do in the last two years creative coming Mild from the republicans all the republicans are after is destroying they go in to destroy government, destroy um, parts of the government that are, you know, the EPA, going after the EPA. Uh, trade unions. Going after the National Labor Relations Board. Uh, going after, you know, so they Going they after go the poor, destroy. going after mothers, you know, nutrition for, so for it's easy. impoverished infants. And, and they're yeah. saying they're solving the problems by cake. destroying, where the, Repu- the liberals are trying to solve problems by creating yeah and which ones yeah so i I know i'm just saying that this is one way to hold the difference between the two and it's easier to destroy almost gone you know maybe it's because i said liberal not democrat when you see evil rewarded over and over again like uh, a republican majority back in the house after after doing nothing but bob dylan's line you congressmen, senators, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway. Don't block off the halls. We're in a goddamn major global economic wel- meltdown where tens of millions of Americans are out of work. The country is hemorrhaging. And these bastards have literally stood in the doorway and blocked off the That's halls right. and blocked literally. every damn thing literally. that that darky president. I'll use the N-word, but I guess I can't. Because that's really what's at the base of a lot of this shit, too, this Tea Party crap. Mm-hmm. They have acted about as contrary to anything remotely known as a patriot could possibly be. With all their booga booga about death panels and socialism, they're pigs. And the people that vote for them are beyond stupid. But you know what? They got away with it. The Democrats, oh, we don't have the votes to bring it to a floor vote, so uh, we just won't, we won't bring the bill to the floor, and you know we somehow we can't we can't argue back against the death panel and the Tea Party menace, we just can't, you know. And Obama, well, we we just can't take the bully pull, you know, can't use that bully pull bit, you know, because we want to bring people together, and maybe if I'm kiss their ass enough, they'll think I'm really white, you know, they'll they'll. <laughs> Respond more to my white side, which is what I think I really want in life. Just forget that, you know, just forget the cafe au lait shade. You know, and, and you know why? The gym, th- these are professional, lifelong politicians. They, th- you know, their bread and butter is kissing the ass of the populace and watering down themselves to try to please everybody. These people aren't stupid, these demon crats. They're on the take. It's the yeah. only possible explanation. Right. They just sat there with their thumbs <clears throat> up their butts while they lost the House majority. They didn't argue effectively. They didn't take the bully That's pulpit. Right. They didn't really try. And this is not to mention that your media, you know, you know, in these uh, in these uh, Arab countries that are getting taken over, you know, this domino mm. effect that's happening over there. There are two things that they they maximally guard. Guard. Mm-hmm. The presidential palace where Supreme Port Head is ensconced Mm -hmm. and the television radio stations. You know why? Because that's the message. That's the great persuader. That's right. It's mass media. You know who owns it over here? Mega wealthy pigs. Ted Turner said this ages ago. Everything you see, hear, read, and watch. Mm Mm-hmm is owned by basically five corporations. Right. They're, the pigs like it. You talk about cons- a conservative, somebody who just doesn't want to change, likes things just the way they are, or better yet, go back in time, 
before that damn government intervention, before all that regulation, where you could work children to death in the coal mines, the good old days, where you could maximize profits. The hell with people. They're expendable. There's always more where they come from. The poor breed. The good old days. That, that's who's in control of your media. Mm -hmm. That's who's in control of your editorial comment. That's why you'll never hear real statistics. You, 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 they want to hide that stuff about how few own so much and how your chances of ever being a big shot or your poor children who are going to have half-assed educations because we have to spend money on bombs. And, um, you know, like the scumbag son of... Uh, what do we read today in the New York Times uh, of Gaddafi? One of his sons was in a Caribbean resort and hired Maria Carey to come and sing four songs for a million dollars while his people couldn't cover their asses. Well, last year it was Beyonce who did it. I'm sorry, that was two years ago. Last year he got Beyonce to come to the resort and do a show. I mean, we have no idea how the pigs really live. We have no idea how much a handful own in this country. And I'll tell you what they own. They own the major media, which is the point I was getting well, at. I, and and you, they brainwash us. And we think it's just... Fox you, News, you th anybody who thinks Fox News is fair and balanced is an idiot. Yeah, you're an idiot. Yeah, polls... You're, are, you're, 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 uh, okay, well, they aren't watching us. And, and the polls have shown that the, the longer you watch Fox News... <laughs> the more misinformed people are. That's, they've done, you know, I, I think that's pretty well established. But we don't watch Fox News. I'm pretty sure where I got that s phrase that, you know, at, you know, the Obama and the Democrats overreached in the first two years. Uh, you know, I got that either from the New York Times or the PBS NewsHour. I mean, you know, it's not like um, you have to go to conservative news organizations to get the spin to think this way. Uh, and, and it's not, you know, and as I just said, I mean, to, to say that the, the Democrats overreached is, I mean, is a completely conservative way of holding things. And, and so when they, when they say <coughs> that, then mm -hmm. it, it infects millions of people out here who are like, well, I thought they were um, really doing some good things, but I guess I just don't really understand because, you know, the, the, they're journalists. They, they must know. So I guess, you know, that they were really trying to do too much, and I was wrong. You know, and it's just so, uh, you know, just those little, it, all it takes is that one, that, you know, it was a sentence, but it just, that's enough to, to spin people and to think, oh, well, I guess it, they were trying to do too much. It was wrong. They shouldn't have tried so hard. And, um, no, and we're maybe, our time. maybe, maybe you, you know, know what, so when we get to the Midwest, you know, what's happening in, in, um, one thing that I've learned in the last six months, which Midwest, just totally yeah. blew my mind, is that in Midwest, M Middle East. Yeah, that's right. I, I like it. I would it. hope so. God knows I'd love to see a rising in I this know, country that people have just had enough. And that's what I'm, I'm like holding my breath and, and thinking about actually not just holding my breath, but maybe this is the time to actually start doing something myself. You know, maybe this is when the people like us need to stand up and say, we need to make this broader. We need to take this beyond public service union struggle against these we conservative need to Republican take our governors. country back. We right. need to tax the, these this rich is the bastards time for and the these progressive, until they squeal. The progressive version of the Tea Party movement, you know, needs... And, and one of the things I, I learned in the last six months is that in Germany... Um, the, things are very different right now in Germany than they are in this country, and uh, there's less unemployment. And one of the, there's a very very strong reason for this. They didn't buy into their uh, the no, Wall Street no, scam of those bundles. You, know, you can say can, can, Canada is is that way. Canada yeah. did not suffer, then and it has to do with the not the Wall Street crap right, shoot. Right. Wheel they of fortune. They had more regulation on their banks. Wheel no, Germany. Weasels. Although there is there is some banking differences in Germany, which maybe I'll talk about. But no, what I want to talk about is the way labor, the way workers are represented on corporate boards. In the United States, corporate boards are, you know, God only knows how people get nominated for corporate boards here. But let me tell you, you can say this for sure. There are no workers from that corporation on the board. The, the, all the people on the corporate boards are uh, fat, cats. fat cats. Thank you. You know, they often serve on each other's boards. 
you know, the CEOs are, are president are on I'll boards on of another. Board if you'll be that's online. right. And then you, we vote each other high salaries. Mm. And it just it's so juicy and wonderful. Cozy, that's the word. But in Germany, they have a law where every corporate board has something. It's like it may be not 50 percent, but it's close to 50 percent representation on that corporate board is workers in that corporation. Dig that. That sounds socialist to me. So bad word, right? So imagine, imagine that. And you know what? German companies don't outsource, not nearly like they do in this country. Ship the jobs there <laughs> because the and workers then say are you like gotta compete uh, globally. Uh, 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 Obama says, you that's know, right. You got to compete globally. So you, you know, you used to be able to compete when your jobs were here and you had a manufacturing base. But you sent those over to oh my gosh, golly, India. And so then, Would what, you like what fries is that? With that? Welcome to Dell Technical Support. My name is Gary. So what does a brainwashed American say? Oh, but that means then we aren't competitive because Amer- we're, we're because be Americans' la- labor costs are too high. Well, How's you know what? Guess what? Feel up your Germany, backside? Germany still exports manufactured goods to the rest of the world. Germany's manufacturing base is very strong wow. and ex- has an export economy, unlike the United States. Hmm. And so this has not hurt them. I mean, yes, they do, and they, they do outsource some things. Welcome to Walmart. But they have figured out how, and it's the worker participation, has figured out how to make it work. You know, we were just seeing something on, on uh, the PBS last night about, oh, no, it was HDNet. It was... Um, about Boeing. About, about Boeing, This right. used to be the uh, uh, aircraft center of the world. Yeah. And, the and, aircraft industries in, in Long Beach, California. And they've completely outsourced, basically, all aircraft production and, and pretty soon the United States Actually, will have no aircraft uh, construction capabilities and, and imagine that if we can't even build a plane for our military because there's no more for. there's no more airports I mean aircraft engineers and aircraft technician you know assembly technicians would you like fries for that that's right um, and Duh. so you know so because of Germany's uh, labor the, the, their rules, their their laws. I mean, not only are unions strong, unions are so strong, they get 50% of the corporate boards. And what that's done is strengthened the German economy. It has strengthened the industrial backbone of the country in a way that we in America have completely lost. USA, United Slaves of America. And and there was also, I was reading recently about uh, their banking also is different, where... Um, in the United States, uh, companies are completely dependent on on Wall Street financing, and so um, you have to always be worried about this quarter's profits de- to determine how you know you are treated by the financial sector. Where in Germany, it's it's more like old style banking, where you take out a loan based on how you're going to perform over the next twenty years, and so there's no none of this. Uh, concentration on short-term profits, which has just also, I think, you could argue easily, has just destroyed American industry because it's all about what you you've made this quarter, not and there's no building the for the long hearing, term. It is has been permitted by the people in Washington D.C. who are supposed to be looking out for your interests. Right. You think slave is exaggerated? You're a sucker. You're not free. You're controlled by the rich via their hired lackeys in Washington, by the cock, or is it coke? I prefer <laughs> cock brothers. We can call them what we want, the, yeah. the cock, cock brothers. brothers. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Right, who financed the governor in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, A real you tough know. guy, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. A union buster, starting with your beloved St. Reagan, another senile pre-Alzheimer, you know, pig who never met a corporation he didn't like, all the way back to shelling for General Electric and Borax during Death Valley days. I'm old enough to remember that. Just bad, just a bad enough actor to really sucker the American people into thinking <laughs> he was a, a good, a good fella. God, golly <laughs> shucks, look at me, clear brush. Gee Willikers. Dear God, I really, I really don't think we're going to make it. I don't think we deserve yeah. to make it. The crap that we have pulled, unbelievable. We just watched a 
documentary well, did you mean the human called, race or the American country? I mean the American people is what yeah. I was talking uh-huh. about, but the right. human race well. too. What do you think is going to happen over in those Middle Eastern countries? you think democracy is going to flower? Oh, yeah, we saw this movie called The Betrayal. That's what you were mentioning. Uh, it, it was There was amateurish qualities to it, which almost made us turn it off, but we were really glad we didn't. It started great. slow, but it really it was nominated for Academy Award Best Foreign Film. Or Documentary. Documentary, so. yeah. But it was um, about a, an experience of this Laotian family who had been, the father had fought for the Americans you know, in the, uh, in La- the Laotian military. In the Laotian military. Called in B-52 strikes. And then when the Americans just Fled. withdrew mm-hmm. precipitously. And, Leaving them high and dry. Um, their family suffered. And then they came to, to, the, United they, they came to <laughs> the United States. And then it was a further betrayal oh, yeah. about how they were treated once they got here. I mean, which is just a miserable experience. And... Um, but just more American shenanigans, to right. make a long story short. I mean, yeah. just, you know, just more more, more mistakes. And, and mis- anybody can make mistakes. And, of course, we're at a level where we do make mistakes. And But, but there's a chronic nature of it. There's, you have to start looking for certain uh, uh, symptoms that point you toward a cause, a mm-hmm. source of these mistakes. And you know what the source is? It's money. Power, it's, it's all about money. It really comes down to money. It's an optimum form of survival. It's Kim Jong-il eating 15-course meals. A gourmet, don't you know? Well, hundreds of thousands of his fellow citizens, f- fellow citizens, of the peons, who cares, mm-hmm. starve to death every year. That kind of behavior. You know? So, I mean... And one, you know, <coughs> one of the things is uh, this belief in American exceptionalism. Uh, I think I, we said this a couple of weeks ago in the show on freedom, that that belief is actually helping keep us enslaved. It's helping keep democracy from uh, really flowering here because we believe we're already free. So we we don't see how we're in chains. And and I and I also talked about how you know we we fail to see the great sweep of history, and when I Arthur and I were talking about this last night, that I think that if the human race survives, say five hundred years from now, when people look back on uh, the United States, what they'll see is that uh, the the reason the Declaration of Independence and the principles of freedom and liberty uh, and equality, so to speak, were happened here was it was a confluence of historical forces that that brought it about it was the time in history when these the nat the philosophers were speaking these ideas and um and america was freed of the the ancient uh, you know the the european monarchies and and history and so th- these ideas could take root here and flower begin to flower but that the people of the united states did not really continue to live up to those ideals and that the we ever? were I mean, continue, well i mean well. you know I mean, there was an alpha okay yes there's you know and, and things you know and and well uh blacks now can vote women can vote uh, things have improved over the time, but the actual, the you know, we were complacent. We were, uh, we took things for granted. We didn't George really Washington continue to fight. We didn't continue to fight for this the, is the increasing best country in the world. We give foreign aid the com- goodness of democracy. our hearts. Jesus is coming any day now. <laughs> I believe in the tooth fairy. <laughs> and that you know that, but that it wasn't so much that we were exceptional here. It was just that the forces of history came together here, and the fact that we let it die well, the forces put the of lie history, to our exceptionalism. I quote my friend Michael Melder about America: "This changeling child was born to bear away the seed of madness in the hollow of his heart. Another start, a new beginning." With independence in the early years, he stitched a smile between the sunset and the sea. Oh, he was free of kings and princes. I can't remember the rest, but the last verse I remember. We, not, we ask not how he betrayed such a faith, but save our grief for his house and lands. 
Yet who shall die so reviled as this Iscariot? Right. The, the seed of madness was there. That's, That's the what opera. I think I was arguing. A handful though. of pigs right. control the legions of have-nots forever throughout human history. And America seemed to be, democracy seemed to be, a true throwing off of that yoke, of right. that dynamic of, you know, of 400 people being worth as much as 100 million of their fellow citizens. But well, you know what? The game was rigged. And I think it's because right. of human unconsciousness. I don't know what else to attribute it to. You know, they've just gotten more clever. Sure, give the women the right to vote. They're half the population. What do you want, an uprising? You want a rebellion? Give it to them. Well, I think, though, that, you know, free the, free, I mean, uh, I, I, but I see, I think that when I say the forces of history, I'm not just I'm talking about the level of consciousness of the human being. Okay. For me, that's the, the true force of history is what we are mentally capable of at any and and that has expanded as you know we've progressed through human history. We 500 years ago, we weren't capable of policing ourselves. Yeah, we how many countries capable. were there 500 years ago that's shrinking, that homogenizing right. process? Right. How many, how many couples, how many couples, how many countries were democratic? Zero. Because, you know, the only places that had anything like that were tribes in like the South Pacific where, you know, it was like there was 50 people. Um, that real ancient way of, of relating. But in terms of, you know, the modern nations, there were zero democracies because the human consciousness was not evolved to handle it. We are evolving. It still isn't. Right. That's mm -hmm. my argument. So in 500 years, we will realize that that's really what we, was happening here. It was not that America was somehow exceptional. It was that th this was the place where this new level of consciousness could be expressed and that we you know we, we didn't really take advantage as much as we could have here we were complacent in it we were we, we congratulated ourselves as being the best and didn't see how we were blessed and could and could keep moving keep moving that forward to be more blessed to be more equal to be more democratic to be to be less oligarchic um, and and so the the powers of of money took us over because of that complacency, and so the 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 evolution of consciousness you know will happen somewhere else in the world. I mean, I think that's very likely that if the we next survive. right. Then that's how I started the whole thing. If there is a five hundred years, and that now. F is a very real F. Yeah, that's not just hypothetical. First time in human history since maybe the late fifties we have had the unique. Uh, uh, possibility of self-extinction, human self-extinction, environmental collapse and or thermonuclear war, which would be the last straw, especially the the climate and the condition it's in now, the environment and the condition it's in now. But we continue to snooze. A lot of good TV shows on tonight. And that's why I was taught, said earlier that, I mean, I was thinking maybe now, you know, instead of just watching in uh, in events unfold in Madison and, and Columbus, I guess that's Ohio, you know, and thinking, oh, wow, isn't that great? Thinking, okay, you know, if I, if I really think this, you know, how about I get up off my butt? Can I say butt? What do you mean you're off your ass? You're, you're I know, but I mean, I know, but more, you know, do more. Presumably I'm dozens of people. <laughs> but I'm talking about more. I'm talking you, about. You know what? There was a demonstration for so, and, and, and for a uh, display of solidarity uh, for the Wisconsin strikers uh, at Pack Square. I didn't hear about it, but I, I saw it on the Citizen Time website. But it, was, it had been the day before. If I'd known about that, I'd have gone in a heartbeat. Right. Because I really do support it. I support anything that shows any indication of Americans waking the hell up. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about getting <clears throat> getting out there and, really, and showing it in a more... Anyway, whatever. This show was about getting in touch with the fact that we are deeply unconscious. We are not in control of our lives. We don't even know who we are. Mm -hmm. We are s floating, coasting like a leaf on an ocean of ignorance. And we're out of touch with that for very mechanistic, explainable, psychological reasons. That's what our work is. Mm -hmm. 
When you're that out of touch with reality, you are totally manipulatable. You right. might as well bend over and spread your cheeks because you're going to get it. It's so, a joke I, about the kid that's from Sinclair Lewis's book. He said, Sinclair Lewis's book, um, he said that when I was a kid, my daddy um, uh, made me take the, the heifer down to get her serviced. <laughs> and from that point on, every time I heard somebody talking about service, I knew somebody was getting screwed. <laughs> Well, friends, you're being serviced, <laughs> and it's your your. Uh, well, what did you say? Mouth, what? Or you said earlier about uh, that the the greatest impediment to freedom is is in our minds. You know, remember you said you wanted to talk about freedom, and I said, well, we had done a show two weeks ago about freedom, and and you know, but I liked how you put it. It was that's that. That's, it. I mean, the slavery, the essential slavery, is caused by the tyrant right in here. Mm-hmm. The belief, I know when I don't know. Right. I'm free when I'm not free. I wrote a song once that was, the operative lines were, once the slave knows he's a slave, there's born the seed of freedom. But you got to recognize you're a slave first. Right. You don't have any hope. It's like a drunk. I can handle drinking. I just like getting drunk every night. I like a few drinks every night. Oh, every night. I'm waking up past that on the street or in the gutter. Mm -hmm. Until you get, I can't handle alcohol. That's getting in touch with objective reality. Objectively facing objective reality. Mm -hmm. That's the lifeline out. And as long as you're manipulated by listening to garbage like Fox News, Nazi propaganda, I'll use the N word. It's perfect. It's fascist. The mouthpieces of the right, like Rush Limbaugh, and anybody who plays fast and loose with the facts, include, including Rachel Math, Mathow and Maddow. Maddow and ex Rush Limp, I mean, ex um, Olbermann. Olbermann. Okay, like, so, you know, what we're saying here when we say we're not free, does, does our country, does our government really express the will of the people? You know, that's the whole, that's the foundation of what democracy means, is representing a republic, you know, a republic really, is that our representatives represent us. They represent our will. And, you know, I actually looked at this like, uh, I, I think, think they 70%. Do. That's the sad part. They do no, represent. No, no. When they did polling on Half health care, 70% of the population wanted single-payer health care. The more it was explained to people by the pollsters, the higher the support for single-payer went. Did we get single-payer? No, seventy percent is huge. Coca-Cola okay, or when the, you get a seventy percent of the population saying yes complex. to something, um, and there, I, I remember I wrote it in my blog. There's another example where it was basically sixty that plus high. percent regularly said stop attacking Clinton, stop this impeachment right. nonsense. Right. So what? Went right ahead and did it. And you know, if you did, you know, and joke. say the polls about. Um, you listen to their masters. Oh, yeah, I know what it was. It was uh, the Bush-era tax cuts. 50% <clears> said <throat> the uh, the tax on the rich, that should have that should have gone back to where it was. And 14% said all the tax cuts should have gone back to the way it was. So a good two-thirds of the population said that tax on the top 2% two, two that tax could, should have been ended, and it should have gone back to where it was. 64% of the population did it happen? No. And uh, the drug policy, I mean, if you really did a poll on drug policy, I am sure the majority of this pop of this gov country would say, end the war on drugs. Is that any th likely in any year in the near future? Now you're attacking future? the prison industrial complex. Right. You know, so what we're saying here is the, the will of the, 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 the people is not being represented in this country. What's being represented is the will of the of the rich, the will of the corporate, Heil Hitler. the will of the business elite. Highly elite. That is what's being represented, and that's why we're not, you know, we, why we criticize this country. That's why we're criticizing our democracy I'll because tell you it's else. I'm faltered. Not, I'm not going to vote anymore. I know. The hell you with said it. that. I really, I mean, the hell with it. I didn't vote two years ago. I didn't yeah. vote. I'm not going to. Let the, what did Claudius say? Yeah. And, and I, Claudius, just before Nero or maybe during Nero, no, before Nero because they killed him for Nero's ascension. Let the poison that lies in the swamp 
rise to the surface and do its job. Be revealed. Be revealed. Be exposed. But that's the you know the the thinking, the positive spin on that, and that's what I th you know how I lived with George W. Bush winning, was b the belief that letting the letting that poison rise to the surface yeah, and be revealed would mean mm. it people would turn against it. That's right. And unfortunately, that's not happening. It hasn't hurt enough yet. No. I mean, had the poison. Third DUI, this time you kill somebody in a car wreck, still didn't do it. Go drink some more. Yeah. Maybe you can run into a school bus this time. Maybe you could be, you know, burned every 99% of your body so there's this crispy scar tissue shell left. Maybe that'll do it. And you know what? Maybe we're going to join the ranks of other former great powers yeah. like Great Britain mm -hmm. and Spain and the Netherlands. Maybe 50 or 60,000 years from the radiation levels and the scorched surface of the earth, you know, start sprouting uh, edible plants and stuff, something else will crawl out of the ocean <laughs> and, uh, in, you know, a billion years start thinking and have a, <laughs> you know, a, a get self-awareness going. And there'll be another shot at it, at taking the next great step in evolution, which is transcendence of subjective mind domination for objective mind. And we can grow up psychologically mm -hmm. and become one people, which is what we are, right. and speak one language, if we even speak anymore, so a telepathic communication, right. and light the world up and go explore the universe together. I mean, we're on the cusp of that, but we're going to blow it if we keep plodding along. And this country has a lot of innate freedoms that really are there. I mean, the power really is vested in the people. Look and the us. people aren't so goddamn stupid. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We've we've given it up. And that's what we're talking about, this complacency. Intellectual, this. lazy, trifle. Look at the younger people. What the hell are you doing? Drinking beer, having like, you know, hip conversations, you know, in the coffee house. What are you doing? Why aren't you on the streets? I mean, what is your what? What's your vision? Your career, making money. Duh. Dear God, I mean, bring it on! I say, hell with it. Let the roof come down. Let the burning roof of the nut house come down on our heads. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll wake up. That's my message. <sighs> I'll okay. give you a forecast. It's going to be dark. It's going to be gray. <laughs> It's going to last you the rest of your life. Now, I'm sorry, I say that every you week. Did. Now. You did two weeks ago. I, know, I said it twice with, on the same show. You said it twice. I know that was very unless you wake up. That's what it's going to be. It's yeah. going to just get worse. It's like that funny noise in your engine that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just going to pretend like it's not there. I'm just going to just keep going. It's getting a little louder. And then one day a rod comes through the hood of your car and you're. Well, isn't that the, the, the whole meaning behind suffering? As if it wasn't for suffering, we would never wake up. I wouldn't. You know, that, I'm still half asleep. Uh, you know, half. <laughs> <laughs> it's through, through struggle that we... Um, so don't talk about getting off your butt. That's what you're doing. That's what this show's about. We've been broadcasting yeah. for a year saying, hello, hello. Are you willing to entertain the idea that you could be crazy? That you could be confusing your mind-generated reality with actual reality. And I don't mean absolute truth. I just mean, you know, water's wet, rocks are hard. And your government is owned by the rich. I mean, start to break up the calcified notion that George Washington never told a lie and that Jesus is coming soon. And that the tooth fairy really doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Your parents put the quarter under your pillow. <laughs> <coughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Call our number. 808-8014. And give us a topic for us to discourse <coughs> us. Thank, thank you to viewer who suggested the military. This has oh. been a lot of fun. It was interesting. Probably we would never have gone here if it hadn't been for your suggestion. So, um, so please. Give us a break. Give us a break, please. So anyway. Uh... Happy trails <laughs> to you <coughs> until we meet again. Maybe, maybe I'll death die. Death is coming. Honest. Death is coming. Happy trails to you. <laughs> Keep smiling until then. <laughs> I 
private trials to you <laughs> till we meet again. <laughs>